Today, I'm visiting three landowners in County Offaly with forester Manus Crowley. The forests that we'll be looking at were originally planted as conventional monoculture spruce plantations. But the landowners now have decided to transform these plantations into mixed permanent forests that produce sustainable timber, enhance biodiversity and deliver other ecosystem services. Let's learn all about this transformation process and why this choice has been made. There's three landowners here adjoining and um, we've been managing this in a collaborative manner since it was first planted. 22 years ago. 22, 23 years ago. So the main species here is, is Norway spruce. Spruce, huh? So our plan here is to create more mixture in that over time. So the owner's objective here is to manage the site under CCF. They want to create a permanent diverse forest here. So in order to do that, we need to start opening up the forest. Uh, you know, the, the site is opened obviously to extract timber. As you can see, it's, it's actually just after having a first tenant intervention here in the site. So a whole process of CCF interventions will be initiated here. This is just the first thinning, which is really just to put in the, what we call an access rack for the machine to drive in. And some selections have been made here. At the first thinning stage, it's, it's relatively similar to a conventional tin in any way. Uh, but it, it's really at the next thinning intervention stage, we'll start to see a lot more interesting stuff happens. The objective of conventional forestry is to get the trees as big as possible, as quickly as possible. Whereas with a permanent diverse forest, we're actually trying to retain the forest in situ for a very long time. So actually having the small trees kept in the forest in order to grow on to become big trees is, is a really important value of the forest. And in fact, you can see here, this is possibly one of the trees that will be removed the next time. So we've quite a large tree here in the core of a, a, a ring of smaller trees, heavy branches on it and wouldn't make for a good quality timber. So when this tree is removed, it's done a crown thinning for all of these smaller trees around it and then they have enough space to start developing into bigger trees at a later stage. In a long-term managed CCF wood, um, because all the trees are selected, you know, a forester is walking through and making selections on it, in general, the quality of the timber will improve because we're removing poor quality trees from the stand all the time. And so in effect, we'll end up with very high quality, high valued timber. You know, and using a CCF system, we could have a full range of diverse species. So in, you know, you could grow Douglas fir in your stand, very, very valuable timber. Oak could be grown here in the middle of a, a conifer woodland. You know, and these are very, very high value timbers grown over a very long period of time. And also by having the full range of species, full range of ages, you're reducing long-term risks to your stand by building in resilience to your forest. So because it's a, a monoculture, its ecological value is arguably relatively low. But one of the main reasons we don't see much diversity in the forest here is because it's so dark. Hopefully, after the site is opened up, I mean, we can already see there's much more light in the, in the wood. So that should naturally allow seedlings of other plants to start coming in to develop and also to allow natural regeneration in the site. So you, you're going to create that diversity also by doing underplanting or bringing in extra species? Ideally natural regen will, will come in but a, a huge part of that is controlling the deer. We've had heavy culling going on here for the last while. We'll see how that gets on. Another, another shot. Um, deer are by far the single greatest barrier to uh, diverse woodland planting and diverse woodland management. So obviously CCF relies on natural processes of regeneration in order to restock the woodlands. So if you have very high deer numbers in an area, they browse the newly regrowing trees. And um, in some areas that have very heavy deer numbers, uh, you can have absolutely zero regeneration of trees on the forest floor, which is a problem. I'm actually standing beside some fallow deer droppings here where we are, so they're, they're very, very common in this area. So if we're interested in having diverse types of forests and managing forests in a diverse way, we are going to really need to take the matter of our deer very seriously. 
because without it we won't have the types of woodlands that we want. The roadway is crucial for the whole management. Quite a while to get that road in, to get the right road contractor. We're absolutely delighted with it, it has changed everything. It has allowed us to manage this plantation in a proper manner. The conventional management of such forests would, in most cases in Ireland, be clear fell. And what would be reasons now for a forest owner to not go that way and choose this alternative way that you are describing? The conventional management for conifers in Ireland, and which is still the, the main management system, is the clear fell system. So what clear felling is, is a forest is planted, a conventional system would perhaps have two to three thinnings and eventually leading up to the clear fell. So a clear fell could happen anywhere from the age of 28, depending on the species. You know, like a clear felling is a, a useful method to generate timber, but it has its, its issues. And, you know, there's issues with when, it, when you imagine all the trees are cleared off a site, all the, the soils are exposed. And as happens a lot in Ireland, it rains and this soil and silt material can get washed out of the site and into um, neighbouring drains and eventually into our rivers. So that causes siltation and sedimentation of our streams and water courses and our special areas of conservation. Something else that we don't really think about is the actual soil itself. Um, carbon is stored in timber but it's also stored in the soils. So when we remove a forest the soil layer tends to get uh, oxidised because it's now exposed and uh, a lot of the carbon in the soil can be released. There's also the loss of habitat, we're removing potential habitat and areas for our wildlife to live. And one of them is actually at the reforestation stage. It's, it's relatively difficult to establish a forest. Tricky enough work in plantations, you know, the site has to be all re-prepared, the branch material has to be all piled up and the trees planted. There's uh, problems with a pine weevil that comes in and eats young trees that are planted, you know, and you've a lot of vegetation to deal with, spraying and using chemicals to control vegetation. It's really lending itself to a close to nature approach to management. You think that will also in the long run be beneficial economically for you guys? The new grants that we're seeing in, in, in CCF, we had already decided to go down this road before the CCF grants. So yeah, that, that makes it much more attractive. But the idea that you could clear fell here and start over again in a refar, just in terms of the physical control of vegetation, you would have masses of willow, mm. masses of vegetation. You'd, it would require huge chemical inputs. The cost of re reforesting is massive. Reforestation is massive in time, the, the resources, Owners are now looking at the view that there, there is a significant cost associated with replanting their land and they're kind of seeing CCF as an alternative way. You know, the beauty of CCF is that it will yield sustained returns to the owner over a very long period of time. So with clear felling, you know, you plant your trees, you do your clear fell harvest at year 30 and it generates a large amount of money for the owner. But then for the next 20 years, they don't get any money from their stand or from their forest because it has to be replanted and the trees need to regrow again and you know all those processes. But with CCF, you know, you're you're removing little and often from your wood. So every three to four years you're doing a continuous harvest from your forest and um, you know it's, it's yielding a return that way. The credits are another part and part of the Oh yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see carbon credits here and if we can get a payment for ecosystem services, well this is the ideal model then. So if you think about the types of things that can happen to a forest and they seem to be happening more and more lately, and, you know, with climate change and pests and diseases, very high winds, we can have drought occurring, we can have massively high rainfall. If you imagine in, a, in, in our conventional forests, you know, we've, we've generally single species stands that are all the same age and, you know, a disease comes along that affects spruce or whatever it is and obviously you're going to lose a load of trees. Whereas in a mixed, uneven age stand, if a disease came in and was just affecting the Corsican pine, it wouldn't have such a massive impact here because 
the coarse confine is only a small percentage of the stand. So from an economic point of view, you still have a functioning forest here and you still have lots of trees standing that obviously have a value. One of the major beetles that is on its way potentially to Ireland is the spruce bark beetle. And you know, in recent years, that's uh, ravaged large areas of uh, Central Europe. There's areas of thousands of hectares that have been absolutely destroyed and wiped out of Norway spruce. So this information is coming back to Ireland. So people are becoming aware of these potential issues. So they're, they're trying to build resilience and reduce long-term economic risk in their, in their forests by creating multifunctional, multi-species, full range of ages, diverse CCF sites. Very quickly, the most important thing why CCF fits so well. Ah, oh, well look, at is a farmer. So yes. Just, you, you, you know, you don't k kill all your stock in one day either. Oh uh, no, just over the year, as they come, as we say. Just being aware of what's going on around us, that this system here is probably more, way more suited to a continuous cover forestry system. We've just started down that track now in the last two years. And hopefully in 25 years time, when we come back, you won't know the place. And you can see that the changes. You can, yeah. You can, yeah. And the rivers and the wildlife and, and uh, like what's to come. Yeah. We're trying to make things more interesting as we go along. What a great example, guys. Thanks so much. Under the newly proposed forestry programme, transformation of existing spruce plantations to continuous cover forestry is supported by the following grant aids. Three payments of 1200 euro per hectare can be received over a period of 12 years to cover costs like marking and underplanting. Landowners also get a premium of 150 euro per hectare for seven years when committing to CCF. And learn more about continuous cover forestry by checking the other videos in this series. Links in the description or click on the end screen. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one.